Python has become the most popular language to learn how to program. It typically runs on a computer, but the MicroPython project has ported it to run on microcontrollers. In this video, we'll be using our tiny desktop display to run Python code that will allow us to display weather data on an OLED screen. All right, let's do this. Getting started with MicroPython is straightforward. We can go to their website and download an image for our respective system, in our case, the ESP8266. We'll then need to install a command line utility called ESP Tool. Next, we can connect our hardware over USB. In my case, I'll use the Wemos D1 Mini development board. Remember to install the USB drivers as we've done in other videos. If everything is set up correctly, I should see the entries corresponding to the board under the dev directory. I'll need to use as a port parameter the entry corresponding to the board onto which I want to load MicroPython. We'll use the tool once again to load the image onto the ESP8266. It needs a few parameters and takes a few seconds, but the process is straightforward. I can then use the screen built-in command line utility to access the USB connection to the ESP8266. Once that connection is established, I can see what's called a read evil print loop running on the terminal. Because this is a Python interface, I can write Python commands. For example, I can display strings or perform arithmetic operations and anything in between. But more importantly, I can use built-in modules that will allow me to talk to different hardware electronics. For example, I'll use the pin class in order to turn on and off the built-in LED. As we're interested in displaying weather data on an OLED screen, let's go ahead and use an API from AccuWeather. We'll need to create an account, and once you're registered, you can go to the app section, create a new app, in my case I'll name it ESP8266 MicroPython, click on the app, and you'll see an API key for querying the AccuWeather API. If you want to find out how this works, you can go to the general info section, but it's very straightforward. The only thing you'll need is a location key for the region in which you're interested to query the weather data. I'll use Sydney, Australia, but you can use your own. This query also needs my API key as a parameter, and once I issue it, I see that in response, I get a lot of information. The main thing I need is the number value of the key entry. I can go to the API reference section of the site, click on their current conditions, click on the get current conditions, enter the location key and my API key, click on the send this request button and see the weather data in response. More importantly, if I go to the curl tab, I can get the exact URL that I'll need to query that data directly. This is the exact URL that we'll need to construct in our application. The next thing we'll need is our desktop display. I wanted to add a reset button to the previous version that I showed in a different video. I cut out a little rectangle on the body and created a very simple button that would fit right in there. Typically for modeling, I'll use Autodesk Fusion 360, 
but I'll export the STL files and upload them onto my Thingiverse repository. I'll leave a link in the description of the video. I of course loaded the STL files onto my 3D printing application. I used the MakerBot desktop as my printer is a MakerBot Mini. The print took about an hour and I used black PLA as the material. The assembly for this project is very straightforward. I stacked the OLED screen on top of the Wemos D1 Mini, placed the little reset button inside the body, and while holding it in place, I put in the stack boards onto the body. Made sure they clicked down to place before putting the back cover on the body. I then loaded it onto the cradle and as I did before, I wedged a flat USB cable between the cradle and the body to give the display a little more stability. After connecting it to USB, I needed to change the USB port as I'm using a different Wemos development board. Using the screen command, now I'm able to include additional modules that will allow me to display images and text on the OLED screen. In particular, I need the I2C and the SSD 1306 I2C classes from their respective modules. After instantiating both of them, I can use the SSD 1306 I2C methods in order to get the data displayed on screen. Depending on the physical orientation of your OLED screen, you might need these additional commands in order to rotate everything that's displayed. I make sure that everything is off using the fill method and then I display the string using the text method. To display images, we need to do additional work. As a test, I'll use one of the icons from the AccuWeather website. First thing I'll do is change the size of the canvas to match the resolution of the display, 64 by 48 pixels. Then I'll decrease the size of the layer because I don't want the icon taking all of the screen. As the screen is monochrome, I'll need to index the colors. You can play around with the different options, but I found these to work best. You can also search for much better looking icons, but this is the one that I have on hand. I'll add a layer on the background with everything filled black to make sure that the pixels on the screen are off. I'll then export it as a portable bitmap file. The question now is how do we load this image file onto the ESP8266? To do that, we'll first create a Python script rather than entering the commands directly on the read evil print loop. And to start out, I'll simply copy paste the commands that we had entered before. Before moving forward, I'll need to install one last command line tool called Adafruit Ampy. It'll allow me to load files onto the ESP8266 running MicroPython. In addition, it also allows me to see the files that are already on the chip using the ls command. I can use the run command to send the contents of the file I just created. Now we can use the framebuffer class inside the framebuff module to load that image onto the OLED display. I'll use standard Python to read the file and then I'll get rid of the first three lines of the file because the data is contained from the fourth line onward. I pass the data as a parameter to create an instance of the frame buffer class that I'll call fbuff. Because of the difference between the pixels on the image and the pixels on the physical screen, I'll need to invert the pixels on the screen. Then I can use the blit method to load the image onto the screen. Before running the file, we'll need to load the image onto the ESP8266 using the Ampa Utilities put command. 
To check that everything went well, we use the ls command and if the file is there, we can run the OLED test script. Now that we're able to display images and text, we can create a script that will allow us to display weather conditions for any location that we want. It'll include most of the things we were using before, so I'll copy paste them over, arrange them a little bit, include a couple of other modules that will allow me to both connect to the internet and send out the request to the AccuWeather API. To connect to my local Wi-Fi, I'll need my network ID and password, as well as the network modules WLAN class. This looks similar to what we've done using the Arduino IDE. Assuming the connection to the internet is successful, we can then issue the request that we had previously used in the browser. We can copy paste it over for reference, but I'll deconstruct it into different parameters for readability purposes. This will be helpful in case you need to either use these parameters again in your code or change them quickly. After building the URL, we can send it out to the server and get a response back. The response will be formatted in JSON. For this example, I'll be extracting the temperature as well as the weather conditions from the response. To display the conditions on the screen, I'll simply add them as text after the image. As the screen is inverted, I'll display them in the color black, which is the third parameter of the text method. If we rerun the file, we'll see everything displayed on the screen. I should note that I knew beforehand that the conditions would be sunny. For a full application, we need to be more thorough and use different if statements for displaying different icons depending on the conditions. The last thing I'll do is copy the file over to one that's named main.py. I'll use the put command to send this file over to the ESP8266 and what will happen is that every time the ESP8266 is reset, it'll run that file by default. We can double check that everything went well and if we disconnect power, and reconnect it back again, we should see the same thing displayed on screen. That wouldn't have happened before because we were sending just the commands on the file over using the AmPy utility. And there you have it. We've successfully used MicroPython to query the AccuWeather API and display the weather information, in my case for Sydney, Australia, on our tiny desktop display. If you like my videos, I invite you to my Patreon page where you can chip in a buck or two. That really helps me put in more time into the videos and release them quicker. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. You can also interact with me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and you can even use the community tab of the channel. Thank you for watching my videos and I will see you next time.